There are situations which even the most experienced airline pilots, like Captain Adrian Ross, have thankfully never had to contend with in the air. Changeable wind conditions are making this approach a particularly tricky one. One dot low showing low outside. Overshooting. A sudden loss of height close to the ground and the crew increase the power, raise the landing gear and overshoot. Captain Ross and his co-pilot respond as if this was a real situation. Dr. Barber is overshooting. Positive climb. Today's technology has made the experience of flying a simulator so close to that of flying the real thing that an important change is now taking place in training procedures. Many of the world's airlines and military authorities are about to benefit from a new age of flight simulation. For the airlines, this is a timely development. Schedules are tightening, competition is increasing, less aircraft can be made available for training, whilst safety remains of paramount importance. But as airports become busier, training flights become less welcome. And of course, the most significant constraint of all on flight training is the escalating cost of fuel. Simply lifting a jumbo off the ground downs two and a half tons. And the higher the price of that fuel, the greater the reluctance to operate flights which carry no fare-paying passengers. In such a situation, it's understandable that aircraft manufacturers and airlines alike should turn to the simulator. And indeed, aviation licensing authorities have not proved unsympathetic. In its recently published Advanced Simulation Plan, the United States Federal Aviation Administration has laid down in three phases the criteria it now requires for a total transfer of training from aircraft to simulator. Now, whilst other regulatory bodies around the world have not yet adopted the same approach, they are undoubtedly monitoring the progress of the FAA with great interest. Phase two of this plan is the most revolutionary. It allows a captain to make a transition from one aircraft type to another, or a co-pilot to step up to pilot on the same type exclusively on a simulator. But the demands which this now places on the simulator are substantial. Some of the main requirements. High speed, 32-bit computing. Visual modeling of real airports. Six degrees of freedom motion. But above all, simulator performance, which checks out against actual flight test data from aircraft. The FAA's plan was widely welcomed. But what has surprised many airlines is the speed with which it's been put into effect. Within nine months of that plan's publication, Braniff International at Dallas-Fort Worth became the first airline in the world capable of converting a flight crews to 747 aircraft totally on a simulator. A simulator built like these at Crawley, England, by Rediffusion Simulation. During the last 10 years, Rediffusion has been developing a simulator which can combine a complete training environment with the simplest possible maintenance program, as well as straightforward acceptance and regulatory checking procedures. This Boeing 747 unit at American Airlines Flight Training Center at Gatwick illustrates the progress that has been made. The simulator's six degrees of freedom motion system is powered by low friction hydrostatic actuators capable of smooth and realistic response to the pilot's handling of the controls. Hydrostatic technology and advanced servo control combine to ensure that on the flight deck the pilot feels that he is flying the actual aircraft. And while the system is coordinating the simulator's reaction to the pilot's instructions, it is also carrying out a continuous check on its own performance, diagnosing automatically any faults as they develop. 
But at the very heart of this new training complex is a high-speed digital computer, providing precise 32-bit resolution and using Fortran to facilitate both design engineering and systems updates. Back in 1976, Rediffusion was the first manufacturer to recognize the current need for 32-bit computing, a need which, throughout the industry, is today regarded as the norm. This Systems Engineering Laboratories 3277 unit is the latest state-of-the-art computer technology. And what makes it particularly important is that it contains proven microprocessor capability for meeting the demands of bigger aircraft data packages and faster processing speeds. Critical areas of the simulator model, for example, are computed 30 times a second and appropriate responses achieved within 150 milliseconds of those on the real aircraft. But from the operator's point of view, of course, there is another consideration, the testing of the simulator performance. In the past, acceptance testing was always a long, drawn-out process involving independent systems checks, depending, in the end of the day, on the subjective response of the pilot. This simulator can be programmed to fly a routine automatically, and its performance can be recorded on a line printer like this. Then, the results produced by the simulator can be compared directly with results produced by an aircraft put through exactly the same test routine to produce an instant and exact comparison of relative performance. A test which has been completed in a matter of minutes. A test which in the past could have taken several hours to check and evaluate and which would still not have produced such an accurate comparison. In fact, such is the speed and accuracy of this auto-test facility that it is increasingly being demanded by regulatory authorities in the initial and the periodic certification of the simulator. But by far the fastest developments have been made here, in the area of the visual displays. The optics, even the mirror may look familiar. But Rediffusion's NovaView computer-generated image system now covers all training requirements and accounts for 90% of the available world market. The night and dusk scenes produced by the basic NovaView SP-1 system meet FAA Phase 2 requirements with airports and ground features realistically represented. In NovaView SP-2, Daylight has been added to the SP capability by the development of a unique calligraphic shadow mask monitor. SP2 extends SP1 in terms of daylight and increased scene generation facilities. Whilst SP3, which will meet FAA Phase 3, improves both brightness and scene detail still further. the NovaView systems will simulate low visibility and adverse weather. The nerve center of the simulator is MAGS, Modular Advanced Graphics Generation System. MAGS is the most powerful instructor facility in the business. Using microprocessors, MAGS monitors and controls the simulated aircraft's systems and its environmental operating conditions. Written information, together with graphic plots and displays, can be called up on MAG's monitor screens so that the instructor can make up a lesson plan, watch how that lesson proceeds, and analyze the results later, printing a hard copy if needed. Plus two. Three, 
Operating automatically, semi-automatically, or manually, MAGS allows the instructor complete freedom to become as involved as he feels necessary in each exercise. In this case, the crew under training are lining up for a routine departure. But programmed into the takeoff is a fire in engine number one at 400 feet. Control column. B1 rotates. Rotating. B2. Plus 15. Concentrated line. Gear up. Mags has another role to play. This is a maintenance page, a plot identifying faults or aspects of performance not up to specification. Guided like this, the engineer can go straight to the problem. And hardware is easy to get at, with automatic diagnostics in all the main equipment capable of identifying the area in which any fault is located. In the computer room, this microprocessor-based maintenance unit takes the whole business a stage further. Because once I have identified the circuit board, it will run an instant check on it and produce a numerical indication of the component which is at fault. It's this sort of attention to detail which is now ensuring that Rediffusion's new generation simulators in service enjoy 99% availability over 20 hour operational days. But it's performance across the entire spectrum of flight training which is winning the confidence of the airlines and the aircraft industry. All Boeing's new flight simulators will be built by Rediffusion in Crawley. But Rediffusion is a company not prepared to rest on its laurels. Stuart Anderson is Rediffusion's research and development manager. Today's visual display systems are all based upon television monitors. The inherent limitation of a television monitor being that it limits the size of the exit pupil that it's possible to produce. The small exit pupil actually means that the co-pilot only gets a view straight ahead and to his right hand side and the pilot straight ahead and to his left hand side. Cross cockpit views are not possible. We're now working on a system which we believe totally overcomes that problem. Here we have an engineering model of the proposed display system. I can show you how beautifully it fits onto this model of our current product. Well, there it is, but uh, what's it do? It's basically a projection based system with three projectors mounted inside this box, mounted above the pilot's head. The projectors shine forward onto the back projection screen, forming a continuous image all around the screen. The image formed there is then observed by the occupants of the cockpit via this large mirror, which surrounds the system. So, there's the principle of a continuous image. Does it work in practice? 
Engineering tests that we've done so far look very encouraging. What we're looking at now are pictures taken from the co-pilot's position in a development equipment that we put together recently. As the camera pans around, notice the realistic views that you get through the pilot's window and out of the left-hand window, just as in the real world. To all of us in the simulation industry, this is very exciting. For the first time ever, it's now possible for all the occupants of the flight deck to participate in the visual scene exactly as in the real world. In this shot, we've got the camera positioned in the instructor's seat. He can fully take part in the training exercise from a visual point of view. With previous systems, the exit pupil of the monitor-based system has been so limited that from the instructor's position, some views were possible, but they had no direct perspective relationship to the actual view outside the cockpit. We believe this is an important development from the instructor's point of view, and even more important from the pilot's point of view. In the world of advanced simulator technology, wide is the most significant development in a decade, and nowhere will it prove more valuable than with helicopter operators. Often flying close to the ground at low speed or hovering, trainee pilots need to be able to perfect their ability to judge heights. Soon, helicopter pilots operating aircraft like this will be training on equipment developed from this commitment to research. Outside the world of aviation, Rediffusion's Systems Simulation Division has built process control simulators for both nuclear and fossil fuel power stations, and the world's first simulator for an offshore oil production platform. And it was thanks to this continuing program of development that Braniff International, whose flight training center is equipped entirely with Rediffusion simulators, has become the first airline in the world to achieve the goal of total simulator training. Captain Dale States is the airline's vice president flight. He has been deeply involved in the program with the FAA. For the first time, we now have the capability to train our pilots under conditions previously impossible. As an example, we now train to runways in the simulator that are contaminated with patchy ice, uh, flooded, uh, crosswind conditions, ground fog, which we would never train in the actual airplane to. So the overall qualification of our pilots is significantly higher today than in the past. The general public is the beneficiary. The next step is phase three which will permit the initial qualification of experienced pilots totally in the simulator. And these pilots will come to the airlines from the military or from the executive jet field. But it will be a significant uh, advancement and cost saving for the airlines. How happy are you, an experienced flyer, putting so much faith in a machine? I'm ecstatic. I think we do a better job today than we've ever done in the past and the recipient is the traveling public. The aerospace industry is surely unique in placing such tremendous responsibility in the hands of a machine. Rediffusion simulation is proud. Its technology has helped to make it possible.